Okay, so this tutorial will be kind of a part one. Probably be a couple to follow about setting up some uh, volumetric lighting um, using uh, RenderMan for Maya. So the first one here, we're just gonna do something straightforward and simple. Um, I've got this little test scene, kind of an extended Cornell box that we'll look at here in a second with a window or a skylight, I guess I should say. Um, that I've modeled this little opening. I have a directional light and a portal light um, outside of that, and I also have a dome light for that portal light, right, to get enough light into this scene here. Um, and make note of just kind of the general brightness uh, in that render, right? So what we want to do is um, put in this volumetric light. Now there's several ways to do this. Uh, we're going to do the most straightforward, uh, not get too fancy with this one. So uh, what do we need to do? Uh, the Pixar, if we look up here, actually has a Pixar volume uh, material, which is what you would use for calculating, you know, fog and and you know various things. Um, the documentation on this gets more extensive when you start dealing with rendering fluids and clouds and things like that. And you can uh, end up using um, Maya's fluid container wanted to create a container for this. We're going to stick with the simple uh, quicker render way for now. So um, uh, what we need to do is put a piece of geometry in the scene and put this material on it so when the light enters that volume it knows to uh, figure out that there's dust in the air or smoke or whatever that might be, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll uh, leave our perspective camera there alone. And let's go create some geometry. And I'm just gonna scale this up. I'm gonna just scale it up just so it clips uh, the room just a little bit. Now, it's important to keep in mind where you place this uh, box. You don't wanna just make it enormous and calculate that everywhere. It could be maybe a little expensive from render time. We also don't want to make it too small depending on uh, the volume itself. So let's for now just start with it like this. We might run into some problems with it that way, but um, uh, we'll just have to see. The one thing that we cannot do is extend it so that the camera sits inside of this volume. So if the render camera is inside of here, we won't see any smoke, any haze, any anything, All right? So um, we have to think about where we're gonna place that. So for now, we'll just do that. And I'm gonna put it in uh, this layer. Let's make that layer uh, visible. And let's name this uh, volume cube. Okay, so we have that set up. <clears throat> and we also need to come up to uh, RenderMan. And instead of uh, Pixar surface or layer surface that we've looked at in class, we're going to choose the PXR volume. And it now has attached this to it. So there's only a few settings in here. Um, let's not worry about sampling in that for now. But uh, the main thing we want to deal with is whatever the diffuse color is. Kind of the smoke color, if you want to think of it that way. But the number one thing is this uh, density. This is... Um, uh, gonna require our attention to make this work correctly. So let's go back into our camera and let's go ahead and we had our IPR up here a second ago, right? So let's fire off another one. Okay, so we're getting something, right? Um, and again, I have a directional light, maybe you can see it right there, coming in at an angle, which is what's doing this there. Um, the portal light's also getting in the act as well because it too is emitting light into the scene and it's um, seeing that volume, right? But the it's pretty dense, right? We're not seeing a lot of stuff in the scene um, in this. So let's go back to our volume cube and uh, let's go ahead and turn down the density. All right, so this is kind of absorbing light. Um, 
he was on already darker um, because of the way it's it's kind of a thickness, right? It's a smoke, so the light needs to come through there in a certain way. Um, the other thing I'm just noticing here, to, let's see here, is you know if, when you create this volume and the light comes through, and of course not only we're we dealing with this shaft of light, but we're also dealing with the haze that's coming from that portal light, which is nice. Um, it's kind of running into the volume right here, and that light is still seeing it, right? So it's it's creating a little boundary. At least it uh, looks that way to me. So I'm gonna come back over to the volume. And let's get it out of this and go back to perspective. Select our volume and just select a face. And let's pull that forward a little bit. I wanna get it out of the way so that the portal light isn't hitting it. Certainly the, uh, the distant light is not gonna hit it at this point, but I don't want it to intersect with the camera and I don't wanna make it ridiculously large. So we'll try this. So now it's close enough to the camera that I don't really see the geometry. Um, where is that guy? Right there. I don't see where it intersects with the camera. So I could probably move it back a little bit um, if I wanted to. Let's do that. So I can start to see it off the frame a little bit. Move it forward. Okay. Maybe that's about where we had it before. Uh, the nice thing is it's not intersecting with the camera and I don't really see where it intersects the wall in that, in my scene, right? It's, uh, that one right there, okay? So that's a good place to start. Of course, it is thicker now, right? The camera needs to, to look through. Oops, let's go back to this one. Hold those up, I don't even like that. So, okay, so there's where we started. We had that one, so let's go ahead and fire off another render. And even though I didn't change any uh, uh, light intensity, you can see that it got darker uh, in that um, scene because it just has more smoke, if you want to think of it that way, to work through. So let's go back to the volume. Let's make it 0.1 maybe. Well, let's put this at IPR. All right, so uh, not bad. Right, and so just keep this in mind as you're, as you're noodling around with the lights, you've gotta be conscious of where you're changing the density. So at some point you're gonna to have to just say, I'm not gonna tweak that anymore. And let's leave it where it's at. And then I'm gonna go back to my lights and you know, maybe I, Make this portal light something like 30 with its intensity. I don't know, I'm just trying some crazy numbers now, right? Just get out of control. And I'm gonna go back to my distant light. Uh, let's just make that two so I get a little more of that shaft of light. Um, it is important to remember that the this is a distant light and there's that angle extent which is uh, kind of a crazy number. The default is 0.5. Maybe if I go up to five, um, it's going to get a little wider. Let's go all the way up to 10. You can see it's starting to um, get softer on these edges, right? It's starting to look more like a spotlight. Of course, the more I open this up, the brighter that light's going to get. So I can back off. Maybe a little bit on that exposure, right? Some kind of, and this is a dark box, right? It only has one little skylight in it. So you'll have to figure out your lighting accordingly. But um, so this is doing a pretty good job. Let's go back maybe and just so we can get a more detailed look at this. All right, we'll do a little IPR. So you can see we are getting some um, color bleeding, or not color bleeding, some um, haze uh, here at the top by that light itself. We're getting obviously a very thick uh, shaft of light from the 
um, bright directional light and it's fading as it gets a little bit further and that fading is really happening because of the angle right it's getting spread out the intensity of it um, but that looks uh, that looks pretty good I like what's going on there you can see it's getting pretty rounded there at the on the edges this is a pretty square opening right um, but because of the way we've changed that angle we're getting a, uh, a softer shadow on the ground okay so let's escape there and we'll just fire up the IPR. So let's just review as this does its rendering here. Um, so for the object, it needs to uh, cover or surround the place that we want the volumetric light to happen. We have to be a little clever so that we don't see the boundary of where it's intersecting with our scene. Um, And uh, density is the number one thing. I guess uh, there is one more thing we could look at here. So, so right now we have uh, all three lights are seeing the volume itself. So let's just go ahead and hit escape. We'll leave that where it's at. And uh, let's go up and change it to your uh, um, menu here to rendering. We're gonna go up to lighting, light linker, light centric. And I'll bring up low window. So here are all the lights in my scene, and here are all the all the geometry, the shading nodes, and stuff. So if I click on each one of these, you can see that they all highlight and say, "Hey, I can see all that stuff." So let's take the um, dome light, and let's tell it that it can't see the volume. Actually, I'm gonna make it. Uh, so the fluid shape here. This is probably left over. I was doing a little test earlier with the. Maya's shader. So if you were using a fluid container, you would want to select this as well if you didn't want a light to see that. Right? And let's also go to the portal light and uh, turn that off. Now, you know, part of this is just art direct, right? Maybe you only want this shaft of light and you don't want the other haze happening from that. Or, you know, maybe you have other lights in the scene that are meant to just, you know, help with lighting an object and they're not meant to be kind of the principal lights in the scene. So, so we're going to use some lights uh, uh, linking and make sure these lights don't see the volume. So let's go ahead and fire off another IPR. So hopefully you can see this distance, uh, this difference right off the bat. Okay, so we're it's a little bit darker back here because the portal light is now not doing anything to illuminate um, the volume. Right, let's we get the little back and forth. Right, so you can see. All that light coming in here was adding to the kind of haze in the room and now it's only that shaft of light that's coming through and that just depends on what you're looking for right what that uh, balance might be um, you know maybe you create a second portal light in here and you link it only to the volume and you turn it way down and then you use the other port you know one portal light to light the room and one to just give the kind of haze that you want in there Okay, 13 minutes, that's pretty good. Um, again, there are other volumes, other ways to use this. Uh, it does come at an expense, right? It takes longer to render these things and certainly the more you use it or the larger the render, it's gonna really crank up your rendering times. But that's the basics for using uh, the Pixar volume shader so you can get some God rays in your room.